This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, we're still in contract law. Uh, I shall remind you very, very briefly, just one line. Don't think about trying to remember case names. All right. Termination of offer. An offer may be revoked at any time before it's accepted. Now remember, a, uh, a contract is an agreement supported by consideration made with the intention to create legal relations. And an agreement has got two sides. And I offer, you accept. Or I invite, you offer, and I accept. So we have two people with a like mind, a consensus ad idem is the, the Latin expression, a, a meeting of minds. And I make an offer, you accept the offer. If I make an offer and you want to take your time before accepting, then at any time before you accept, I can call back that offer. I can cancel it. No, I've changed my mind. Sorry. It comes from the Latin, you will not need this. It comes from the Latin vocary. The verb means to call. And re vocary is to call back. So revoke is to call back your offer. I make an offer, you're sitting there thinking, I'll, say, I'll tell you what, I'll sell you my car for $500. No, I won't. So I made the offer and then I revoked it straight away. Revocation must be communicated to the offeree. The person making the offer is the offeror. The person to whom the offer is made is the offeree. And once that offeree uh, decides to accept the offer being made, the offer that has been addressed and directed to them, they become the acceptor. So the offeree changes their title. They're no longer the offeree, they are now the acceptor. So revocation, if I make an offer to you and then change my mind, I must tell you, I must communicate it to you. The way, the means of communication may vary. And down at the bottom of the page here, notice of revocation may be communicated through a reliable third party. And, and that is the case. If I make an offer to you and then I go outside and, and just told my wife what I've done and she said, you're joking. The car's worth five, more than 500 pounds. You can't do that. I said, well, it's too late now. I've made the offer. She said, well, has he accepted yet? No. She said, well, I'm going to, I'm going to cancel that offer. So she gets back on the, the internet and she communicates with you before you've accepted and she says, look, I know Mike made you this offer for 500, but he's since told me that he wants to revoke that offer. So I'm sorry, you've not yet accepted and now the offer no longer exists. That's through a reliable third party. And that's acceptable. Notification communicated to you through a reliable third party. The postal rule does not apply. Now, postal rule is a strange thing, and it, and it was important. It was important before the internet, but we're now with such ease of instant communication with telephones, and, and then they became telexes and fax machines, and then telephones, and then... Um, did I say telephones? Telephones and then emails and the internet and FaceTime and Twitter and social networking. Postal rule is almost not applicable anyway. But whatever, the postal rule never has applied to offers. It never has applied not to revocation of offers. If I make an offer and then <coughs> think back in history before internet, if I had made an offer and sent that offer by letter to you, and then I changed my mind and I sent notification of revocation, there used to be a, a, a thing called the postal rule, but it only applies to acceptance. It doesn't apply to revocation. For revocation to be effective, it has to reach you. It has to be communicated to the offeree. So the postal rule, which I will explain a little bit better, when we get to acceptance, the postal rule does not apply to revocation of offer. Lapse of time. When an offer is made and it's not been accepted for a period of time, it's not right, is it, that after an un inappropriate period of time, that offer should be deemed to be still open. And that's what the case was in 
uh, Ramsgate Victoria Hotel and Montefiore. Montefiore applied to buy some shares and Ramsgate Victoria Hotel didn't, didn't reply, didn't respond until six months later when they said, um, yes, okay, we'll allow you some shares, but we're in liquidation, so can you pay the money quickly? But it was six months, and six months is too long when you make an offer to buy shares. That should be accepted within a, certainly a period shorter than six months. We're not sure what the period is. I think it's three weeks now. It, it, six months was far too long. So lapse of time can kill an offer. Other ways offers may be, be killed. Rejection. I make you an offer. I shall sell you my... I'm, we'll sell you my car for £500. And you say, no, that's it. Offer gone. The offer no longer exists. Which are the ways in which an offer can be terminated? Well, that's another way, by rejection. By death. If it's a personal service contract, if I have offered to clean your windows, I will clean all your windows at your home. I will clean them for, for £50. And then I die. Before you've accepted, I die. So you can't now come to my house and, and speak to my grieving widow and say, where's Mike? He promised to do my windows this week, 50 pounds. I'm accepting his offer. Well, it's for personal services. What do you expect to do? Arise like Lazarus from the death in order to come and clean your windows and then go back down again into my coffin? Death, if it's a contract for personal services, death terminates the offer. But what if it's not for personal services? What is me offering my car to you for £500? And before you accept, I die. Well, my personality is not crucial to this potential contract. So you ring up, can I speak to Mike, please? And this tearful voice, I hope it's tearful anyway, this tearful voice says, no, I'm sorry, you can't. And you say, well, it's, it's you. And you say, well, it's me, Mike offered to sell me a car for £500. I'm just ringing up to accept his offer. Is there a problem? Yes, he's dead. You've just accepted my offer. It's a contract not for personal services. And so my death is not important to the continuation of this offer being available for acceptance. It's important to me, clearly, because I'm dead. It's important to my widow because she's just lost her husband. But it's not important for the purposes of this contract. So if you hear a tearful voice on the end of a telephone, you might think, say, oh, uh, Mike offered to sell me his car for four pounds. I'm um, just accepting it. Too late, he's dead. Well, you've just got a car for four pounds. It's the notification of the death. When you ring up and my boy and you say, uh, can I speak to Mike? And this tearful voice says, no, he's dead. Oh, that's a shame, you said. I'm just ringing up to accept his offer to buy his car for 500 pounds. Too late. You've been notified of the death and so the offer now ceases. So termination of the offer could be by lapse of time, could be by rejection, could be by death if it's a personal services, could be by notification of death if it's not a contract for personal services, if my personality is not crucial to the contract. It could be failure of a condition precedent. <coughs> I will give you £500 if you will marry my sister. But if you don't marry my sister, I'm not going to give you £500. So failure of a condition precedent to the contract uh, brings about the end of the offer. Notification of revocation must be communicated. We've dealt with that. I'm not going to go through the detail of notification of Bradbury Morgan, Dickinson and Dotty. If you're interested, because these are good stories, if you're interested, you can always look them up on the internet. They, they are, if you have time, they are good stories. They're fun stories, some of them. A counteroffer brings about the end of the offer. Do you remember in the previous lecture, I offered to sell you my car for 500. I invited you. To make me an offer. You offered 300. I rejected that and said no 400 and I'll accept 400 instead. And you rejected that with a counter offer. You rejected and counter offer and said no 350. So we can go like this backwards and forwards until we settle on a figure or I say no enough I'm walking away. So a counter offer rejects the offer. It kills the offer. Acceptance kills the offer. 
because the offer is no longer an offer, it's now an integral element of a contract. So the offer no longer exists, it's part and parcel of this agreement supported by consideration made with intention to create legal relations. And refusal to accept. Go on, you accept. I've made you an offer. Accept it, accept it. No, I'm not accepting it. I'm not accepting your offer. I'm not, I won't accept. So refusal will bring about the end of an offer. It's not rejection. It's not saying no and here's a counter offer. It's just saying no, I won't accept it. So offers, these are half of the agreement. Remember, a contract is an agreement. Supported by consideration, made with intention to create legal relations. And an agreement involves two parties, the offeror and the offeree. <clears throat> the offeror makes an offer, remember, distinguished from invitations, and they are to the offeree, and the offeree says, yes, I accept. So an offer is half of this contract, which is the agreement, offer and acceptance. So the offer is the first half. It comes after invitation, if invitation is applicable, if invitation does exist, out of invitation comes an offer, or with no invitation, I'll sell you my car for 500. That's an offer, no invitation, there's the offer being made. So it's half of the agreement. It's an expression of willingness to be bound on specific terms. It's me saying, I will sell my car to you for 500 pounds must be certain, specific terms, certain terms, it must be certain. There is a case, Gunting and Lynn, I think Gunting and Lynn is, is a, a nice case, so I should tell you a little bit about it. There's a contract to buy a horse for £100, and there would be an extra amount payable if the horse was lucky. No, what do you mean lucky? Is it lucky because it won three races? Uh, race meetings in the UK or is it lucky because on the first time out it broke a leg but it was able to recover or was it lucky because it was able to eat grass and run free in the fields uh, where previously it had been cooped up all the time in a stable define lucky will you cause why when you're driving along and you see a horse in a field, you say to yourself, oh, that's a lucky horse, that will be worth an extra £50 bearable. No. So lucky is indefinable. And therefore, that extra amount payable, on the basis that the horse was lucky, was too uncertain to be enforced. It must still exist when I accept it. Now remember in the previous page, I've just gone through how our offers can be terminated. If it's terminated, it can't be accepted. But if it's still alive, if it's still the offer is still there on the table, then it's capable of being accepted. It must be distinguished from invitations. Enough we've come through that. It must be distinguished from statements of intent. Well, of course it must, because if I tell you it is my intent not to build any more houses uh, adjacent to the house that you've just bought from me, uh, then that's not something that you can rely on. Just me saying it is my intention not to, or even it is my intention to add on an extra room there with a sloping room, or and refurbish the kitchen and put in a new bathroom and get it decorated. It's my intention to do that. Okay, so you, I shall buy the house. But then I refuse to carry out my statements of intent. You can't enforce me. You can't say, I accept it on the basis that no, a statement of extent, a statement of intent is not uh, specific. It's it's not actual. This is what is happening. So, a statement of intent is not enough. A response to a request for information is not an offer. This is about a plot of land for sale in Jamaica. The plot of land was called Slipe. Pen. No, it wasn't. It's called Bumper Hall Pen. I was thinking about when I was in Jamaica and, and I used to drive to work into Kingston down Slipe Pen Road. Now, a pen is a plot of land, and this contained, this, this particular case contained, concerned a plot of land called Bumper Hall Pen. Uh, and that's in Jamaica, that's why I said Slipe Pen, I'm sorry. 
So if bumper hole pen were for sale, how much would it be? $3,000. Accepted. No, no, no. I just asked a question and you gave me a response. And a response to a request for information is not an offer. So it's not therefore capable of being accepted. A request for information is not itself a counter offer. I make an offer to sell you the car. You say, yes, I accept it. Can I pay you in two months? And I say, no, that's a counter offer. No, it's not. You're asking if you can have time to pay. You've accepted, accepted. Can I pay in two months? Yeah, okay. Or no. But either way, your request can I pay in two months, is not itself a counter offer. So your acceptance creates the contract. The contract is still good. And that was the case of Stevenson and McLean about steel bars. Can I pay over a period of time? Revocation must actually be communicated to the offering. Now we've gone through that, haven't we? When I wrote uh, Revocary uh, in the previous page. It must be communicated. I'm going to give you the detail of this because it's a, a very strange case. On the 1st of October, an offer was sent by post to, from South Wales to a place in America offering to sell some uh, steel. And then on the 8th of October, the offer all changed their mind. So offer sent. On the 8th of October, revocation sent. Revocation sent. Revocation sent. On the 11th of October, the offer, the original offer, was received. And it was accepted by, by, by telex. The telex machine is a sort of early form of fax. On the 16th, 15th, 16th, 15th, on the 15th of October, uh, it was uh, accepted by post. And on the 20th of October, uh, the revocation was received. The question is, do we have a contract? Offer was sent on the 1st, revoked on the 8th, so before it was received, it was revoked by letter. The offer was received three days later on the 11th, and it was accepted by Telex. It was formally accepted by post on the 15th, and then revocation is received on the 20th. Bernard van Tienhoven, the case, don't remember the name, but those are the facts of the case. And the question is, do we have a contract? And you may very well, you could say yes or no, you may very well say either. But the answer is no, we don't. Oh, sorry, yes, we do have a contract. made a mistake there. Yes, we do have a contract. Because acceptance was made before revocation was received. And the postal rule does apply to acceptance, but it doesn't apply to revocation. For revocation to be effective, it has to be received. And it wasn't received until the 20th, and it had been accepted before. Even though the acceptance has not yet been received, it, the, the postal rule does apply to acceptance. So it was re accepted before revocation was received, and therefore we do have a contract. An offer may be mailed to the world at large, but we know that R and Clark, we've already uh, considered cases which begin with R, considered those in the early lectures uh, on English law. Williams and Carr went in, I'm not going to tell you about it. It's a nice case about a, uh, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not telling you, it's a nice case, it's a fun case. If you add little bits onto it, it's a fun case. And Carlyle and Carbolic, uh, but I already have told you about 